Good evening. To uh, it's our Sunday evening service. Uh, let's just uh, open in prayer. Dear God and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you all that we can come back to your house this evening. We thank you all that we can come and worship you and praise you. Lord, we pray that you may bless us in this time. Lord, speak to us through your word all tonight and let us give you all the glory. And we ask this in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start our worship with um, that same hymn that we sung this morning, number 21. Uh, but we're going to do the last three verses this time. So hymn number 21, we can start from verse 10. The God who reigns on high, the great archangels sing, and holy, holy, holy cry, almighty king. Let's stand when you're ready. Please, Barry. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Campbell Evangelical Church, Bethwin Road, between the Oval, Kennington, and between Campbell Green and between the Elephant and Castle. So it's like a triangle, a pinpoint in the middle for all those looking for a local church. So if you're interested, do come along. Those who are watching online, you'll get a warm welcome here. This evening's service led by John, but it will be uh, given the message from our brother Paul all the way from the Oxford Baptist Church. We were greatly blessed this morning, and he says he's had a lovely day so far. Let's round it off and make it a lovely evening as well. Uh, he will be, will you be staying for a little while, or will you be shooting off Paul? He's a freelance, <laughs> he's freelance, so he might be hanging around a while for the fellowship afterwards. Do have a chat with him if you want to. Uh, that's today. Uh, now, Tuesday at uh, 8 o'clock will be our bi uh, Bible discussion group in James. And on Wednesday at 7.45 will be our Bible study and prayer meeting. On Friday at 6 o'clock is the Children's Evangelistic Club. Uh, now, I believe it was a good ladies' meeting on yesterday. A, a, a number of the ladies met and had good fellowship uh, for their monthly meeting. So we thank God for that. Remember to hold that meeting and the football evangelistic meeting in your prayers, please. Now, next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock sharp will be our elder, Mr. Stephen Whitten, taking the morning service, and in the evening at 6.30 will be our other elder, Mr. John Gardner, taking that meeting. Uh, I don't have much else to say apart from the offering boxes at the back. Tried to cover most of everything, so back to you, John. Thanks, Barry. <coughs> Okay, let's turn to our uh, hymn books again then, and we're going to sing uh, hymn number 371. 
371. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Let's stand when you're able to sing. Thank you.
you'd like to uh, turn to your Bibles then, and we'll have our first reading, which is uh, Psalm 1, the first Psalms in your church Bibles. You can find that on page 590, Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Let's uh, come to the Lord now in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord God and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we are able to come and, and come into your presence, Lord, this evening. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can come and lift our voices up, Lord, as we worship you and praise you. Lord, and that even we can come before you now, Lord, and, and come and speak with you, Lord, and know, Lord, that we can come into your throne room, Lord, and you hear us. Lord, you hear our prayers. We come before you humbly, Lord, and yet you welcome us in. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your great love and kindness and mercy. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, Lord, you sent your Son to die on that cross, to pay the price for our sin, to shed his own sinless blood, so that we might be washed clean, made whole, righteous before you. Lord, so that we can come and have communion with you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we may thank you for this every day. Lord, that we may see, Lord, that we are so blessed. Lord, even blessed above others, Lord. And we see, Lord, that even through times of difficulty or times of hardship, Lord, we have that to hold on to, that we are yours. Lord, and that you know us, and you know us by name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can call you Lord and Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you made us into new creatures. Lord, that we've been born again. That your Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we may want to walk in your ways. Lord, that we may walk with you. Lord, and that you may guide us and help us as we pass through this world. And we see, Lord, that our end journey, Lord, our destination is to be with you in heaven forever. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we won't lose sight of that. Lord, that we may first fasten our eyes on you. Lord, and like Peter was in that... Um, in the Sea of Galilee, and he was walking on that water, Lord, to you. All the, all the time, his, his eyes were fastened on you, Lord. He was safe. But then when he took his eyes off of you, he, he started to fall beneath the waves. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we may keep our eyes fastened on you. Lord, that you may guide us and keep us through this troublesome world. Dear Lord God, we pray, Lord, for maybe anyone here tonight that does not yet know you as Saviour. They can't say that they and put their trust in you. They can't say that they know that when they die, they will be with you in heaven. They don't have that hope. They don't have that um, assurity. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you may speak to them tonight. Lord, we pray, Lord, that these people may see, Lord, that they are sinners. That, Lord, their sin needs to be paid for. Their sin needs to be dealt with. They can't just ignore their sin and hope it will go away. But, Lord, they must come before you. They must come and bow the knee and come in repentance. Lord, and we know, Lord, that you told us, Lord, that if we come and, and ask for repentance, Lord, in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and if people are uh, true in their heart, Lord, you won't turn them away. But, Lord, you will welcome that prayer. Lord, and you will do that great work. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you may even speak to souls tonight. Lord, that anyone that does not yet know you as Savior can um, do that, uh, have that prayer, Lord, have that, that message with thee, Lord, have that talk with you. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you may indeed do that great work that only you can do. Lord, that you can quicken the dead. Those, Lord, that are dead to your 
take to your word, Lord, that are blind and they cannot see, Lord, that you can do great things. That, Lord, you can open the eyes of the blind. You can open the ears of the deaf. Lord, you can even um, make those that are lame, you can make them walk. And those that are dead, you can raise them from the dead. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our Saviour, Lord. We know, Lord, he died and he rose again. And he's there in heaven one day to return again. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful truth. Lord, that all our hope is, is held on him. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we may hold fast to your word. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you may bless us here, Lord, in Camberwell. Lord, that we may be um, uh, a light shining out for you, Lord. That we may um, want to tell others of you, Lord, that you may use us. Lord, that we may be vessels to tell others of you. Tell others of your goodness and your kindness and your love. Lord, and how that you can save us from our sins. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we may share that gospel message. Lord, that you may go before us. Lord, and you may prepare hearts. Lord, that they may come and, and not be able to resist all this wonderful uh, gospel, Lord, that we know. Be with us now, Lord God, we pray this evening. Bless Paul, Lord, as he opens your word to us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for bringing this man down from Oxford. Lord, we pray you may uh, continue to bless him and his family and in, in all his endeavours. They're working with the Oxford Bible Church. Lord, we pray, Lord, you may bless him in uh, all that he does with his work there. And pray, Lord, you may bless us this evening too, Lord, as your word is opened up to us. Lord, let us give you all the glory in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, let's um, turn to our hymn books again. And this time we're going to sing hymn number 423. 423. I found a friend, oh, such a friend. He loved me ere I knew him. I'll stand when you're ready. to us uh, this evening so it's Acts chapter 14 
And uh, in your church Bibles, you can find that on page 112. So Acts chapter 14. And we're going to read from verse 8. <clears throat> and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly, beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up right on thy feet. And he leapt and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycania, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you. And preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are, in, that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Amen. We pray that God will bless Paul as he opens up that word to us uh, shortly. Now just before Paul comes up, we're going to sing again hymn number 485. Now this uh, hymn uh, is unaccompanied, so we'll sing it without any music. Uh, but as you can see, there's a, there's a chorus that goes with this. I think the next slide's got the chorus on. So uh, when you're ready, we'll stand singing number 485. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. I like to stand when you're ready to sing. <clears throat> After three. One, two. Three. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to
great to be in the house of the Lord again. I hope you're not too tired of me yeah, and listening to my strange uh, Eastern European accent. But uh, it's good that the Word of God does not have accent. Uh, whether it be European, American, British, is for everybody uh, uh, to hear and to understand and to receive. And so we're grateful to the Lord again for giving us this opportunity uh, to open the Word and uh, dig in and get some, uh, I don't know, golden nuggets to be, uh, to be enriched uh, in the Lord. So uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, before we go any farther, let's bow our heads and uh, pray together that the Lord will bless the word for tonight and uh, let it be truly uh, a blessing. Father, we come before you and we are grateful unto you again, Lord, uh, to uh, praise you uh, and to uh, sing uh, praises unto your name uh, together, congregationally. Lord, I pray now that uh, we would uh, uh, be quiet and silent as we hear the word being preached. Lord, there is a time to sing and there is a time to be quiet and uh, listen to what you have prepared for your servants. Lord, I pray that you remove all the distractions. And uh, of course, there are many things going on in our lives and in our hearts and uh, our minds can be uh, evil affected even sometimes with pondering upon these um, uh, cares of life. But for, for a moment, Lord, I pray that you would uh, bless us with your presence in such a way that everything would uh, uh, fade away and we would concentrate on, on the cross, on Jesus. For we are gathered here under the name of Christ, and it is in His name we pray. Amen. 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 Acts 14, wonderful chapter. We are still on the first missionary journey of Apostle Paul. Uh, this morning we looked at uh, uh, the section in chapter uh, 13 where Paul preached to uh, the Jews in the synagogue. They gave him this opportunity, and we know that the food was many of them came to the faith after. Uh, Paul preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, Barnabas assisting him, and uh, we have seen how the Lord has blessed that time uh, when Paul and Barnabas visited that city. Now, they are going to another city, as we can see uh, here in verse 8, as John um, uh, read just a minute ago. They are heading towards Lystra, and um, in verse 8, why don't we go ahead and read it again uh, together, because this is a very special uh, part uh, in this chapter to me and I trust to ourselves. In verse 8 it says, And there said a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they ran their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. And these are the three verses that I want us to concentrate tonight. Starting with verse 15 and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Amen. Wonderful uh, passage of scriptures. And uh, as you can see, uh, this time when Paul preaches to uh, this uh, heathen, uh, it differs a bit uh, because the audience is different. This time he is faced, they are faced together with Barnabas, with people who all their lives 
uh, worshipped false idols. And uh, they considered Paul to be Mercurius, and Jupiter uh, was uh, reserved for Barnabas. Nevertheless, um, uh, doesn't really matter how much of a title, how high of a title you get, it is still false one. It is still paganism, it is still heathenism. And Paul, look at what Paul's reaction and Barnabas' reaction. They rent their clothes. Now, that's uh, something that really shows their agony with um, those things that are not right. They see that there is something happening that is not pleasing unto the Lord, and they rent their clothes, and they ran among the people crying out. And as I was reading this passage, uh, the Lord uh, spoke to me and asked me, do you rent your clothes when you see weakness going around, going around uh, your uh, life every day? What is, what is your conscience doing in regards of this particular sin or this particular social sin, uh, we call it? Do we have this reaction? Do we have this uh, righteous anger, so to say, uh, to the things that are not pleasing to the Lord? Well, if we don't, then we probably should because we see that it's a, it's a proper reaction when a holy man or a holy woman sees that uh, the wickedness abounds. Of course, the reaction would be or the response would be the anguish and the pity, really, uh, 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 that's felt in heart. And so, Apostle Paul, we all know that he was a great evangelist and he, you could say, couldn't believe what, their people were, what these people were doing right in front of his eyes. Um, he never thought that any would uh, consider him as one of the gods of uh, Pantheon. Nevertheless, it, this fact did not put him off. He still was pursuing one thing he was born for, which is preaching the gospel. And there, right there on the spot, he says, Sirs, why do you these things? Meaning, you are deceived. You should not do this because... This is false gods you are worshipping. And we also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, Paul says here. And I know that today we don't have any uh, Greek temples such as uh, they had back in those days dedicated to worship of Jup Jupiter or Mercurius or other uh, pantheon gods. But oh, how many idols we have in our own lives don't we, whether it be a Christian or a non-believer. And I know that uh, there are uh, idols that I need to deal with in my own life. Sometimes family life can be an idol. Sometimes work can be an idol. Earning enough just to uh, pay the bills can be sometimes an idol. Am I not right in saying this? And this Western society is driven um, with a, a motivation to get and spend more, as much as you can. Nevertheless, we all know that uh, the scares of life last for other things, and uh, other things, they can be our Jupiter, and they can be our Mercurius. Now, what is our reaction? We should rent our clothes. If not physically, if not visually, then at least spiritually, we should have this uh, pricking in our hearts, when we understand that this is something that is not pleasing unto the Lord. And when Paul saw this in somebody else's life, uh, he, he, was, he was really regretting seeing this. And he did not stop there. He preaches the gospel. And this is our attitude. This is our um, um, this is example for us to follow, really, when we see how the world around us is getting more... Um, wicked and wicked, uh, the life of a Christian should be more and more unto a perfect day. The, uh, the verse comes to mind from Proverbs. Can we turn to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18? This is something that uh, really spoke to me in a big way, but Solomon speaks here and he compares uh, two uh, different groups of people. In verse 18 he says this, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Today, uh, you have more closer walk with Christ than it was yesterday because this is our trajectory. This is our 
you could say, curriculum vitae of a Christian is right here. More and more unto the perfect day when we'll see him face to face or another render, another uh, uh, interpretation of perfect day is when we will grow out of being a chi child spiritually into a perfect mature man walking with him. But at any rate, we really are going more and more unto the perfect day. And this perfect day, Apostle Paul is bringing to these people who worship Jupiter and Mercurius. And it is wonderful how Paul uh, does it. And of course, Barnabas was a witness because he uh, traveled with him. But first, notice with me that in verse 15, Paul talks about God as a creator. Now, in order for you to be saved, you have to be born, again, born physically first. And in the Gospel of John, we see that um, you have to be born of uh, the water and of spirit, uh, we read in uh, the Gospel of John. So in order for us to be saved, first we have to have a physical birth, but don't stop there. You have to be born again. So in this verse, we see that God is a creator. Because it says here, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. These people that worship Jupiter and Mercurius, they looked around them and they assigned to every part of nature uh, its own God. And Jupiter was on the top of the um, hierarchy of those Greek gods and uh, Mercurius, as we know, was the uh, deliverer of the news. And so they, 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 they assigned to every part of nature of their uh, social life a god. And so they, that's why it's called Pantheon. They had, they had so many gods, so many gods. And people were just, just confused. And Paul now with Barnabas comes and brings light, brings perfect light into their lives. My question is, do you have this perfect light in your life? Because... Before Paul comes, these people were in complete darkness. Complete darkness, whether it be worshipping Jupiter or Mercurius. Um, and of course they had all this uh, liturgy and ceremony, but it was all dead. It was all in vain. You may follow um, your religion. You may follow uh, some kind of social idea or political idea. But it's all dead if there is no Christ in it. And so this is what Paul is trying to say here. You are worshipping nature all around you. You worship, uh, they even had these uh, uh, dryads, right? The um, ghosts of forests. So they like to uh, uh, give to uh, particular part of nature its own God. And so there were millions of them, thousands, I'm sure. And now Paul says, turn from these vanities. Uh, vitality, for them it was a life. Nevertheless, Paul says, you are worshipping vanities, and now you have to turn to the living God. Now, how can you turn to the living God if there is no preacher to preach? How can you, live, how can you turn to a living God if you harden your heart against uh, uh, the gospel? Therefore, if you are here today and you still worship these vanities, I urge you and I pray that you turn to the living God. God. Paul says here in verse 15 that uh, there is a living God, which means all other gods are dead, or, as he puts it here, their vanities. Vanities, emptiness. They don't feel empty. Emptiness cannot feel empty heart, can it? So vanity, in other words, is emptiness. And every person's heart who is not a believer, who is not born again, his heart is empty. And they're trying to work out their own salvation uh, with uh, works of the law, with worshipping vanities, but it all comes to naught. And my question is, is your life full of vanities or emptiness? How long shall you try to Jupiter and Mercurius instead of following a living God? Now verse 16, look at me at verse 16, where it says, Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Now, this tells me that the Lord not only created the nations, countries, and different continents, and tribes, and languages, and accents, uh, he also gave them a freedom of choice. And we see it all back in the uh, Garden of Eden, where really two trees were in front of Adam and Eve. Almost daily they passed by, 
and they still had a chance. They still had a, uh, a choice whether to partake of that forbidden tree or not. You know, and so it is with the nations as well, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Now, along with this verse, would you please turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, very last chapter of the book, um, written by the wisest person that uh, ever lived, apart, of course, from uh, our Lord Jesus. But um, wonderful words. He speaks in chapter 12. And uh, if I can quickly turn to it. Now, there we go. Mm, verse 9. Uh, chapter 11, pardon me, starting with verse uh, 9 down, downwards. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes, but know that thou, but know thou, that for all these things God will bring thee unto judgment. It's a wonderful uh, and sobering words we have here. Now, the similar idea we have there in chapter 14, where it says that God suffered them uh, to walk in their own ways, meaning he gave them time to ponder and to meditate on the witness about God around them, about which he speaks later on that verse. So he gave them time to repent. And so it is today. He still long suffers and he will long suffer. Look at me at uh, Psalm 136, please. 136. This is probably one of my favorite Psalms. Uh, in the book of Psalm, but it has got only 26 verses, but in each one of them there is this phrase that comes up every time. Would you guess which phrase is it? Verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for He is forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. And by the way, uh, look with me at verse 2. He is the God of gods. There is no Jupiter. There is no Mercurius. There is no all those uh, hundreds of uh, gods. There is only one God. And his mercy endures forever. And this is what we see in chapter 14. He suffered them uh, to live on this earth. Yes. But at the same time, uh, he did not live himself without a witness, as we read later on uh, in the same chapter, uh, next, uh, next verse. And so, let's turn to that next verse. So, the first one, uh, going back to verse 15, we see here that Apostle Paul preaches about the Creator, the Creator of universe, Creator of people, Creator of everything in it. Now, verse 16 talks about the liberty that he gives to people, the freedom of choice and we traced it all back to the Garden of Eden and the question is how are you using your liberty your freedom are you using it for yourself uh, to get all kinds of pleasures or get all kinds of things or are you using this liberty for the things of God verse 17 nevertheless he left not himself without a witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Lovely verse. Few things here. He left not himself without a witness. It is always, it is always. The, uh, the Lord is always preaching. The Lord is always speaking. He is always knocking, so to say, on the heart of a believer. Even this lovely flower is over here. This is creation of God and he speaks so that we can give him the glory just by looking at this at this beauty but more than that I remember one of the uh, uh, scientists of um, uh, previous century said two things amaze me uh, moral law inside of me and starry skies above me so that stuck with me ever since I heard it so I believe that the Lord has given to each one of us present here and not present here he gave to humanity the gift of conscience. And sometimes when we do things wrong, 
this conscience pricks us and we understand that it is something unpleasing unto the Lord. Now, on top of this, if you are a born-again believer, you have Holy Spirit to guide you and speak to you, to be more precise, because conscience, I believe, is a, a part of a general revelation of God. But there is also a specific or a uh, certain, you better, you maybe uh, are more convinced with the word specific revelation of God, which we see in Christ Jesus and in his word. And so Paul says here <coughs> about, I believe, both general revelation of God and specific revelation. Because uh, we know that Christ himself witnessed of God the Father as he walked on this earth. And so he was a witness of a living God. In that he did good. I love this phrase. God did good when he sent his own dear son on this earth to witness about the kingdom of heaven. Why don't we go ahead and turn to this wonderful chapter in Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. And this was just like Paul <coughs> preached um, uh, to the Gentiles. And he did one thing. He, he pressed toward one thing. He was a man of a single pursuit. And so uh, was Christ Jesus, of course. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 13, isn't it? Chapter 13, we have the parables of the kingdom. And I think we got seven of them here. We are not going to read uh, um, them all. But it's just a good reminder for us again that the Lord is preaching. And look what Jesus is uh, 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 giving to uh, the multitudes uh, in the parable of uh, the sower. Now, verse 18, starting with verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony place, <clears throat> the same is he that hears the word and anon with joy receives it, yet has not he root in himself, but dures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. My question is, are you easily offended? This world can throw at you so many different uh, offenses, but are you standing strong in the Lord, no matter what may come your way? Listen, we are building our house on the rock. In fact, it is built if you are a believer. And the billows will come and the winds will be on that house. Will your house uh, stand strong? Verse 22, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So that's a wonderful passage. But it seems to me that uh, people in <coughs> Lystra that worshipped false idols, uh, we read about them that they persuaded. It was, it was a very hard job, but they still persuaded them not to bring the sacrifices unto them. So it seems to me that they fall into the very last category in the parables of Je in the parable of Jesus, the parable of a sower, they received the seed. Now the question is, it's all good about them, but what about you? Do you receive the seed? There is the, the seed is, as we are told by Christ later on, as he explains it to uh, his disciples, the seed is the gospel. The seed is the word of God, and your heart is what is a, is a soil, is a, one of four types of soils, which. Which soil, which type of soil is your heart uh, tonight? And so tonight, really, uh, we see that in the power of the Holy Spirit, Apostle Paul preaches about God the Creator, God who gives liberty to people, and God <coughs> who gives witness of the kingdom uh, of God. Will you be so obstinate, or, or will you be 
uh, so defiant or uh, hardened uh, at your heart as to uh, not to receive uh, the word or you will receive the word as uh, these uh, people I believe received and uh, interesting that <coughs> after that uh, Paul finished uh, preaching to uh, Li uh, Lis Listranians uh, residents in Lystra uh, he went to another town Lystra, Derby uh, they stoned him uh, and then uh, the Lord by his grace um, extended his days and he was uh, resurrected back to life <clears throat> what happened afterwards uh, to these people I, uh, I wondered and I was thinking uh, yes uh, Paul preached the gospel to them not only that uh, in verse 23 we see this and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting they commanded them to the Lord on whom they have believed and so it is interesting that uh, Apostle Paul not only uh, gave them birth so to say spiritual birth uh, of course it is all done through the Holy Spirit but also he left some Fathers, and I believe you have some good fathers. You have some good and faithful and wise men here. And so, uh, if you want to talk to them about salvation, if you want to talk to them and just pray and outpour your heart, you may do so. I'm sure they will be glad to hear uh, and sit down with you and pray and seek the face of the Lord because the time is at hand. We, we will witness the return of the Lord very short. We're not given when. We're not, it's not our business. It is not our business to know the times and seasons. All we have to do is to preach the gospel and live according to the gospel. Shall we pray? Father, we, we come before you this evening and yeah, we are grateful unto you, Lord, that you are a creator, God, and you give us freedom and liberty to choose between good and evil, but Tonight we pray that uh, those of, uh, attenders who are uh, here tonight, uh, those of them uh, who are not uh, saved yet, may they choose good. May they choose uh, to follow you. May they leave the past life behind. May they leave the world behind and take the cross and follow you until they meet you face to face, until, until that uh, perfect Day. So, Father, we are grateful unto you that you are our creator. You took care of us from the very uh, uh, day of birth. And you gave unto us uh, the privilege of freedom. Lord, we, we can choose. And it is, it is liberty because where there is the Spirit of God, there is liberty. Today, tonight, Lord, I pray that uh, people would choose to follow you. And, Lord, we are grateful unto you that you left a witness. You have left uh, the gospel, written word, but not only, also the world around us preaches the gospel so clearly and so beautifully, especially now that spring strikes the world, this part of the world. I'm grateful unto you, Lord, that uh, you have revealed this unto uh, many of us, but I pray that you would open the eyes of those who are still worshipping Jupiter's and Mercurius, oh, may they realize that it is all vanity and emptiness, and only living God can fill their hearts and fill their hearts with goodness, with gladness and spiritual food, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. We commit this out into your hands, Lord, and may we witness seed being planted into a good ground, and may it bring much food, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for that, that word, Paul. And uh, let's close our worship then this evening with this hymn, When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. We don't know when the times and seasons are, like Paul's told us tonight, but those of us who know the Lord as Saviour, we know that our name will be on that roll when it's called up yonder. If you don't yet know the Lord is your Saviour, then come to him tonight and your name can be added to that roll. So let's uh, stand and sing, When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more.
Dear Lord God and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you all for those words there that we sang. Lord, we thank you all for that word that we heard. We thank you all for the witness, all that you've left here, showing us all that you are a true and a living God, Lord, and that you save us from our sins. Lord, we pray that you may bless us now this evening. Lord, let us give you all the glory and bless us now, we pray as we part. And I ask these things in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>